The full-size crossover segment is filled with many great choices. This may be great for the consumer, however for the manufacturers it makes it much more tougher to compete in this segment. Even though the Dodge Durango is not a first choice that comes to mind when thinking about a full-size crossover, you will find that the Durango offers many compelling and unique attributes. So let's go ahead and check out this 2015 Dodge Durango Limited. Now styling on the Durango is very aggressive and mean looking. It's certainly one of the most stylish full-size crossovers in the class and it has a very masculine in your face kind of look and I think it's fairly stylish overall. Certainly one of the best looking ones. Now here goes the key fob for the Durango. Fairly stylish and high quality looking key fob design. You do have remote keyless entry, your unlock and then your lock and then to release your tailgate. You do have a power tailgate by the way, but you have to click on the button two times. Then you have your remote engine start, which you have to click on the button two times. And then you have your panic button too. Now since the Durango got a pretty big refresh for the 2014 model year, not much has changed for 2015. But new for the 2015 model year is that there is the availability of the Dr. Dre's Beats audio sound system and then the RT can be decked out with vibrant red leather upholstery and then the black top package adds assorted styling enhancements and generous helpings of gloss black exterior trim. Now our Durango we also do have here is the fairly loaded limited trim. It comes with many premium features such as a full on leather interior, navigation as well as a sunroof. We also do have these fairly good looking 20 inch polished aluminum wheels which have a pretty good looking design to them. Now our Durango has the bright white exterior color with smart key access on the driver's door and the front passenger door. It also comes with a full on black leather interior. Power driver's seat and then your power lumbar and power recline. Now when you step on into the interior of the Durango here, it's a very high quality looking cabin design. It also looks fairly similar to the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which this vehicle is heavily based off of. Basically the Durango has third row seating which the Grand Cherokee doesn't and then the Grand Cherokee has the good off-road capabilities that the Durango doesn't have. But these vehicles are fairly similar in terms of interior design. Now the step-in height is also pretty high for a crossover SUV. I wasn't expecting that. Now you do have push button ignition, just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. And what you're hearing there is the base engine which is a 3.6 liter V6. Now you do have a full leather wrapped steering wheel. Coming to your transmission, you have an 8 speed automatic with the dial gear selector. It's fairly easy to do. When you put the vehicle into reverse, displays your rear view camera with guidance lines and trajectory as well. And then you do have rear parking sensors as you can hear them right now. And then you also do have manual shiftability via the paddle shifters. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights fog lights and the hazards. Driver's window and the passenger window are fully automatic and I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the hood check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with LED turn signal indicators integrated onto the mirrors. Halogen projector beam headlights with LED daytime running lights and halogen projector beam fogs.
Now essentially under the hood here we have a 3.6 liter V6. It's the base powertrain and it produces 290 horsepower at 6400 RPM and 260 pound-feet of torque at 4800 RPM with real-wheel drive being standard and all-wheel drive being optional. Our Durango, since we do have the all-wheel drive model, produces EPA estimates of 17 in the city and 24 on the highway. When you do get the rear-wheel drive model, fuel economy goes up one more MPG to 18 in the city and 25 on the highway. Now what makes the Durango very unique in this class is that it does have a much more larger optional 5.7 liter Hemi V8. Now no other vehicles in this class offer a V8 engine which is pretty unique. Now if you do get the V8 engine it can tow up to 7400 pounds while this 3.6 liter V6 can tow up to 6200 pounds. Overall with this 3.6 liter V6 you definitely don't need more power. It produces ample amounts of power for this vehicle. However, if you do want the optional V8 engine, it is there. Coming to the rear, you have LED tail lamps with LED turn signal indicators, rear window wiper with a rear window defroster, and a single exhaust tip, as well as a LED third brake light. Dodge also likes to call these their LED racetrack tail lights. It's a pretty unique styling cue that you will find on all of Dodge's vehicles nowadays. Now you have all of your basic power necessities, power windows, power mirrors, and your power door locks, interior chrome door handles, and you also do have memory seat settings for two people. Nice soft touch armrest. And let's go ahead and rev it up. Very nice. This V6 sounds pretty good. Would love to see how the 5.7 liter Hemi sounds. Now as far as build quality and materials go inside of the Durango here, it's pretty average for the class. And you have nice soft touch materials up here on the upper door panel. The armrest is also nice and soft touch too, nice and squishy. Dashboard is this also really padded material. Down here it's all hard touch plastic and then on the center console lid it's all soft touch. And then also build quality is decent. It's certainly not the best in the class but it's pretty average for the class. It's certainly not the worst either. Everything for the most part fits well together. However, every now and then you will find some interior trim and pieces to creak a little bit. Now coming to the steering wheel design, I really do love the steering wheel of new Chrysler products and it's a very beefy looking steering wheel here and I'm a huge fan of this new design. Basically you have your cruise control buttons over here and then your steering wheel mounted audio controls are actually located on the back of the steering wheel. Not a lot of vehicles do that besides Chrysler vehicles. You also do have voice recognition and your Bluetooth phone controls. And then right here controls your TFT instrument cluster, which I will get to a little later in the video. We also do have a manually tilting and telescoping steering wheel. Also forgot to mention that this vehicle does cost $44,330. Out of the rear view mirror and your 911 assist, roadside assistance. And then you also do have your sunglass container, interior illumination lighting, and your power tailgate button is right there. Garage home link, and then your sunroof with your sunroof controls. With the sliding shade, of course. Headliner is also a decent plush quality. As far as visibility goes in the Durango, it's decent, but it's not the best in the class. You have a lot of side glass area. Outward visibility is okay. 
However, when you get to real world visibility, it is a little bit limited to to a really little small rear window back there. And then the seat pillar is also pretty thick. Now as far as seating comfort goes, these definitely aren't the most supportive seats. These seats are also very similar to what you'll find in the Jeep Grand Cherokee. They're just very narrow feeling and then they're also quite firm too. There's not a whole lot of plushness to these seats and they don't offer a whole lot of support. Overall, they do need to work on their seats a little bit better. I probably wouldn't take this vehicle on a long road trip. Just not the most comfortable seats here. Coming down here, you also do have a little storage cubby, a USB port, auxiliary input, and an SD card slot for your different media options. We also do have a 12 volt power outlet, cup holders, and then your center console, and this is where you will find your optical disk drive, another 12 volt power outlet, and then not a whole lot of center console storage here. It's fairly small overall. Coming to the intuitiveness of the controls, these are probably the best climate controls in the business. They're very simple and easy to use. The whole center stack looks very clean and uncluttered. I love that about Chrysler vehicles nowadays. Now you do have dual zone automatic climate control. You have your temperatures right here and then you can also select it from these hard touch traditional knobs and buttons or you could do it by the touch screen which is also very responsive. And then you have your fan speeds by the dial right here. Front window defroster, rear window defroster, recycling, easy as that. However, if you do want to change the different zones, you actually do have to go to the touchscreen. But as you can see with the responsiveness of the touchscreen is lightning quick. Your parking sensors off button, your traction control off, and then your eco mode too. And then if you turn your eco mode on, it would actually display up on the TFT instrument cluster. Now, coming to the main infotainment system multimedia interface, this is certainly one of the best in the business. We've seen this multimedia system many times before we love it. It's the Uconnect interface for Chrysler products. And the responsiveness, like I said, is very lightning quick. As soon as you touch on it, there's no delay or anything like that. It's very simple. And when you come to radio, basically you have your AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite radio. And then no trouble there. And then when you come to media, gives you all your other different media sources which includes your CD player, Bluetooth, streaming audio, and your SD card slot, auxiliary input, and your USB port. When you come to your controls, it gives you your heated seats and then your heated steering wheel as well. And if you want to fold down your headrest when you're backing up into a parking space. Climate, that's for your AC controls. It gives you the rear climate as well love this system it's just so easy to use at all times as well the exterior temperature data will display up here as well as the digital clock and the direction of travel coming to the navigation system it's Garmin based one of the best in the business it's very clear and easy to read very simple too and it also does give you live traffic of course very simple and easy to do Then you just enter in your destination. And then you have your Bluetooth phone connection if you want to hook up your phone, have an integrated dial pad. Look at, look at your phone book, have your contacts all stored on there, and then look at recent calls, and then your messaging. Coming to the Uconnect apps, you can also have a Wi-Fi hotspot in this vehicle too. You can download your favorite apps such as Pandora, iHeartRadio, many different apps. And you have Sirius XM Travelink too. You also do have Slacker as well, AHA. But of course you have to have your smartphone data connection. So overall I really do love the Uconnect interface. Like I said we've seen this system many times before and Chrysler actually introduced the Uconnect interface I believe around 2011-2012.
Now let's get to the instrument cluster and the gauges. Over here you have your speedometer and then your fuel gauge is also down there too. Now coming to the TFT instrument cluster, basically it shows you various amounts of vehicle information. Love the rendering and the graphics of this screen here. We also do have a digital speedometer. It shows you what gear you're in as well and then your fuel range as well as your direction of travel. And basically, like I said, it's all controlled by these buttons right here. If you have any stored messages, it will show that. And then it gives you your audio, what audio source you're on. You can also change the different audio source, which is pretty neat. And then it gives you your trip information. We also do have your trip odometer located on here. It gives you your average MPG, your elapsed time of course. And then it also gives you your fuel economy data. Shows you your current MPG, average MPG, and your then your fuel range too. And then also gives you various amounts of vehicle information such as your tire pressure monitoring system, transmission temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, oil life percentage, and your battery voltage. Pretty nice. And then you can change if you want it in kilometers or miles per hour. Overall, love this system. Now, as far as driving dynamics go of the Durango, overall it does pretty much offer a smooth and quiet ride, which you would expect out of a full-size crossover here. And the power on this vehicle is pretty good, but what's not all that amazing is the steering. It's not all that responsive given Dodge's very sporty brand image and this is certainly probably the sportiest looking full-size crossover in the segment besides the Ford Explorer Sport. Also what's pretty interesting is that the Durango offers a true four-wheel drive system which many of its competitors can't say. However the Jeep Grand Cherokee certainly has a better four-wheel drive system but the Durango does offer a better four-wheel drive system than competitors like the Toyota Highlander, Chevrolet Traverse, and the Ford Explorer. With that being said, the power from the 3.6 liter V6, like I said, there's ample amounts of it. The transmission does shift pretty seamlessly too. And overall, this is actually a pretty comfortable highway cruiser. Just don't expect it to handle like a sports SUV here. Alright, and let's go ahead and shut it down. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Now like I said, we do have a power tailgate. Now if you're looking for the most cargo capacity out of a full-size crossover, you will not find it here in the Durango. In fact, if you compare it to most rivals, in the full-size crossover SUV class, the Durango actually has less cargo space, maximum cargo space, than most rivals in this class. Now the seats do fold down, of course. And then we also do have a 12 volt power outlet. To fold down the seats, it's fairly easy, very simple. Just pull this up and then push the seat right down. Easy as that. And then also, what you will find in a lot of Chrysler vehicles is that you get this little flashlight, which is pretty nice. Comes very nifty if you're trying to look for things in back of here. Build quality and materials do follow through in the rear. Still nice and soft touch on the armrest and upper door panel. Now these rear seats also do recline for the second row. Sitting back here you will find a decent amount of room. Definitely a lot of headroom as well as a decent amount of legroom. I have the seating position to where mine would be at. I'm about six foot and I have a little bit of knee space. But back here you will find dual map pockets, rear air vent, 
and some nice luxury amenities such as two USB charging ports, heated seats for the rear passengers, and a 115 volt power outlet. We also do have a rear center armrest with cup holders. Thigh support for these rear seats can be a lot better. These certainly aren't the most comfortable second row seats in the class. They're quite firm feeling too, even though we do have these optional leather seats. And then here's your controls for the rear climate, fan speeds, temperatures, and your zones. Now to get into the third row, it's actually very easy to do. One of the most easiest mechanisms in the class, in my opinion. Just pull on that lever, and then just pull on this tab, and then this whole part comes up. And then you just hop right in, easy as that. Now I actually have to say I'm actually a little bit impressed because I did expect the third row to be a lot more cramped, but there's actually a decent amount of room, and I'm a pretty big guy. And there's also a decent amount of leg room as well as headroom back here. I'm very surprised. This is actually more comfortable than what you would find in a Chevrolet Tahoe for the third row. And then you also do get cup holders back here too. Very comfortable for a third row, at least. All right. Powered passenger seat with manual recline and then power lumbar too. Glove box compartment, nice and damped and lined with felt. Very high quality. So the 2015 Dodge Durango is a solid pick for a full-size crossover with its aggressive styling, its stylish and high quality interior design, as well as its powerful engine lineup. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.